is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hook Shots Podcast. I am your host, Joe Cermelli, and all I got to say is streamer boys come out to play. And if you just got that reference, okay, for what movie that's from, I just think you are awesomer than I already thought that you were. Literally, within minutes of the first announcement that a Hook Shots podcast was going to exist, you guys have been like, streamers? 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 Fly? Streamers? Big Browns? Streamers? 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 Dude, come on. You guys know that I'm ate up with giant streamers and Big Browns, and it was only a matter of time before we had a rap session with my main man, Brian Wise. Now, if you are also into the big streamers for Big Trout game, okay, if you tie your own flies especially... Um, Brian really needs no introduction, but in case you have no idea who Brian is, little bit of backstory. Brian is the mastermind behind Fly Fishing the Ozarks, and he has built that brand largely on streamer tying videos. And what was so captivating and eye-catching about what he was doing was, you know, on YouTube for all these years, you had these tying videos that were, you know, 35 minutes long. And the dude's like, okay, now what I'm going to do here is, up, oh, up, oh, I overwrapped that. Let me back up a step. And it's like it took forever to get through a pattern. Brian came along, sped everything up, set all his tying videos to dubstep, which for some reason worked. And these videos just took off. And if you tie flies, okay, guaranteed at some point, whether you knew it or not, you were watching one of Brian's tying videos. So Brian has been around for a long time. And if you fast forward to right now, 2018, he's got over two and a half million views on YouTube. And what he has essentially become is sort of the keeper of modern streamer culture. Up until very recently, which we'll talk about, I mean, all Brian has been doing is is tying other people's patterns as this whole big streamer game has sort of gotten more and more popular over the years. He's sort of the guy that everybody who plays it looks to for what are the coolest patterns out there now? What's different? It's kind of like if Brian's tying it, good chance I should be tying it or fishing it. You know, and as we'll find out, Brian didn't set out to sort of become you know, so synonymous with this big streamer game. He just really liked the flies, thought they were different years ago before this got popular and and started tying them. And because of that, you know, he is arguably more plugged into the big streamer game than anybody else. You know, he is good friends with, you know, all these tires who have revolutionized this, this whole approach to fishing trout and have been innovators in the fly tying scene. And no doubt about it, you know, I give Brian a lot of credit for turning me into the streamer junkie that I've become. You know, I have always enjoyed streamer fishing. I've been doing it my whole life, you know. But you have to remember that while I grew up fishing for trout, you know, I grew up in a very smallmouth heavy area. I've been saltwater fly fishing for a long time. So streamers were always a big part of the repertoire. And then all these years ago, you know, one of these these videos of Brian's pops up and I'm watching him tie this massive jointed streamer, something I'd never seen before. And I was like, man, people are people are throwing that at trout like that's that's not a marabou muddler at all. You know, and it was because of that that I started buying some of these patterns, you know, and tying some of this stuff. And I hit Brian up to help me, uh, you know, him and a bunch of other tires for a story I wrote years ago for the magazine for Field and Stream called Shimmy Shimmy Pow about this this sort of revolution in streamer fishing. You know, and it didn't take long, early on, that I just started throwing some of this big junk just to see what would happen. And what happened was I caught a hell of a lot less trout than I was before, but the ones that I did catch were, no surprise, a hell of a lot bigger. And it was happening in places that I'd fished, you know, for, for a lot of years. In some cases, I was catching fish in these spots that I never even would have thought existed there until you got some giant meat wad in front of their face. And while I was really in love with the flies, you know, I I sort of developed the, the, the game on my own. I didn't really know a whole lot about 
fishing these styles of bugs, but, you know, you just sort of learn as you go. And I was making my own sink tips to loop onto my floating line, you know, real short stuff. Some would just be a foot long, some would be a couple feet long, you know, I always had an intermediate on me and just sort of on my own figuring out the best ways to present this stuff. And I don't really know if it was right or wrong, but it was working. I mean, I was all of a sudden just catching so many more, you know, 18 to 22 inch trout than I ever had before that I just like fully full on fell in love with this. And I was just like, this is my new jam. And then in the spring of 2015, I finally got the chance to go down to Missouri, northern Arkansas and Missouri, and fish with Brian for a video shoot on his home waters, which is the North Fork of the White and the White River. And I'd fished there before, but not with fly gear. The first time I'd ever fished the white was purely conventional fishing. And I went down with all the big streamers that had been kicking ass back here in the Northeast and my little sink tips and my little system of stuff that I'd prepared. And uh, Brian basically took one look at it and was like, mm, no, we, we got to do things a little bit different here. Now, if you've never fished the White River before, okay, it's an amazing river. And I don't want to get into too much detail now, but suffice it to say, okay, it's, it's really big water. It's a big river. And because of some things that we'll learn from, from Brian down the road here in a little bit, you know, it doesn't fish the same as maybe a more typical, quote unquote, brown trout stream. Okay, the fish behave differently. They set up a little bit differently. And in just a couple days of fishing with him and seeing the way he does things, it changed my entire perspective on fishing and presenting these big flies. And everything that I pulled out of that trip has stuck with me ever since. I basically changed my entire approach and took what I learned there to all the other rivers I brown trout fish on. And guess what? Started catching even more fish than I was before. And now it is to the point where I am, I am so ate up with streamer fishing for trout that it's just sort of synonymous with trout fishing. Like if I'm going trout fishing, that's what I want to be doing, okay? And that's not to take anything away from, you know, dry fly fishing. I love catching fish on dries. Make no mistake about it. If there are heads up, I want to hit them with a dry fly. But if you were to give me a choice and say, well, we can float here and we're going to have heads up all day, or we can float here and we'll, you know, probably catch fewer fish, but we got a good shot of smacking some biggins on the meat, guess which one I am picking. But I will still put that streamer rod down in a heartbeat if good dry fly ops present themselves. Now, nymphing, got to tell you, my friends, I cannot tell you the last time that I nymphed by choice. And I'm not talking about steelhead, okay? That's like, you know, the whole chuck and duck eggs and San Juans. That's like the uh, weird alcoholic uncle of traditional nymphing, okay? That I do because that's how you got a steelhead fish. But I'm talking about a nice double rig, you know, with a little copper john on there, a little pheasant tail. I have not done that by choice in forever. It is always some last resort, nothing else is happening kind of gig. And the funny thing about that is, it's not because I suck at it. Let me tell you something. If you grew up fly fishing on the East Coast, okay, or even for that matter, I'd go as far as to say east of the Mississippi River, son, you better know how to nymph, okay? If you don't know how to nymph, you are going to struggle catching trout on a fly rod. You know, growing up fishing North Jersey and a little bit Western PA and the Pocono Mountains in Northeast PA, rising fish, as far as I was always concerned, were a luxury. That was never a given. If you got out there and it's like, oh my God, there's fish rising. It was like you were giddy because most of the time you just expect to either be throwing a streamer or more often nymphing. So I know how to nymph. And the irony in that is you talk to any trout guide worth his salt. In fact, I did a story in the magazine years ago where I, I polled 90 or 100 different trout guides. And one of the questions I asked was, over the course of the season, which style of fly is likely to catch your biggest trout, nymph, dry, or streamer? I mean, it was like 99% nymph, and that's accurate, okay? You're trying to get a big brown to eat a streamer. You need the right brown that's in the mood for a big meal, okay? You want heads up. Well, you got to have the bugs, and then you got to have the fish tuned into them. Most of a trout's feeding cycle happens underwater. 
So yes, over the course of a season, on average, your biggest trout and probably your most trout are going to come on nymphs. No doubt about it. Can't be argued. But one of the beauties, one of the exciting things about throwing big streamers is you cover so much water. Every cast to this bank or this log jam, like you're just waiting for that blast. And now when I go back to nymphing and there I am high sticking, you know, one lane over and over again, I'm just like, I'm bored to death. So whether you have already embraced the meat shanks for the brown trouts, or maybe you're on the fence about this, Brian and I had an amazing conversation about everything from where streamer culture is going, how it's changing, and, you know, how to really get in the right frame of mind to be successful at it. Because for the uninitiated, okay, it is not just as cut and dry as tying on a double deceiver and going at it. But I promise you, when a giant brown rolls off of a bank and just smokes that thing, it is as sexy and exciting to me as some of the coolest dry fly takes I have ever had. Yes! Oh my god! Hello? Brian Wise. What is going on, man? Not much, dude. Long time no talk. How the hell are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah? Are you, uh, are, yeah. You, are you posted up in, in Gainesville, Missouri tonight? Yes. Yes. What's shaking in, in uh, the town I lovingly call the capital, the best gas station corn dogs <laughs> on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> there is not a lot shaking here. The corn dogs are shaking. There... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there was there was a lot less shaking there the last time I hung out with you down there because it was like the worst March ice storm you guys have gotten in a while. And if you think there's nothing open in Gainesville past five o'clock, try past four o'clock <laughs> with sideways snow. But I remember fondly, dude, the gas station corn dogs and those lovely ladies there in town went out of their way to pull me some corn dogs out of the freezer and fire them up. So that we would not starve in our motel room. That's right. <laughs> but I know you, you you're in shape and you like weigh as much as one of my legs, so you probably don't frequent the corn dogs, but uh, <laughs> a little bit. Anyway. Though. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. All right, a little bit. So, man, dude, you have been busy lately in the bit. uh the media the media worlds. Yes? A little, New a web bit. series. A little bit. Yes. Yes. We are gonna talk a lot more about that, but um dude. Looking at your Facebook page, I don't see no new fish shots, man. You on those rivers down there or what? Um, you know, this you know nothing against the Facebook or the the book of faith, like a buddy of mine calls it, <laughs> Big Ted. Um, I when when I get on Facebook, all I do is like get a nosebleed and then <laughs> I <laughs> I get off Facebook and then I go to Instagram. <laughs> so, so that's. That's what I do. <laughs> oh, okay, and it, yeah, and see, I do. I didn't look at your Instagram, man. So you know. Are oh you, well, uh, gee, I'm so, thanks. I'm I sorry, dude. Appreciate you know, that. It's, it, it's so funny. My heart, because we've talked so much about like, I come to you with YouTube questions because you know YouTube, and you ask me Facebook stuff, and like, I don't do great <laughs> on YouTube, and like your stuff doesn't do great on Facebook. And then right. uh, it, it, it's funny. And like, I'm not nearly as Instagrammy as I should be. So had I looked, would I have seen some, some, some big butter as of recent? The butter and actually some smallmouth. Oh yeah. Some early, some early smallmouth. Bronze yeah. in it. Yes. Always. Every chance. Gotcha. Gotcha. And dude, are you, uh, do you still guide, man? I don't even know how many people, you know, who know of you know that you are a guide for hire. Are you still guide? <laughs> right. Yes, I do. Um, I actually, uh, I'm coming off a really busy spring. Um, this was a, this was a, this was a big spring actually. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the, the, the breather period a little bit where I can get my feet back under myself and, and tie some flies and, and stuff like that. So, but yeah, no, I do guide. Um, I, as, as much as I can anyway. Yeah. Do you still do, will you still take anybody or like is it just streamer dudes that want to fish with you now? You still you still do chuck and duck if you got to, bro. No, we do, we do a lot of that actually. We <laughs> we do a lot of of nymphing. I stare at indicators a whole lot. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. But but with you know, I guess it's it's kind of turning into a win in Rome thing. Sure. And 
you know, I'll get people that are, are passing through and, and stuff and they, you know, they've seen the videos and, and stuff like the, you know, the tying videos and stuff like that. And they'll, they just want to come down and throw streamers. And, and I, I, you know, I, I, I say, okay, I guess we can throw streamers. I don't, you know, I'm not a big streamer fan myself, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, that's, that's kind of, it's, it's leaning more and more and more to that, that streamer side of things. Well, for sure. I did not tell you what, like there's, there's like a, a, a sort of a hidden point in what you just said. Um, you know, and we don't have to harp on it because most hardcore streamer guys know this and it's like, duh, but I hear it from guides all the time. You know, people who don't do this, watch this stuff and then they want to go do it. And 20 minutes later, they're like, oh, this is a whole lot of work. <laughs> like this is, this is not easy. So I imagine you see a fair amount of that. Well, you know, um, I, I really don't. It's it, what I, I, I'm very, very, maybe a little too far up front with with guys whenever they it, it's almost like you go through an application process whenever you you call me for a streamer trip <laughs> it's like, okay run us run us through okay. it so we can all apply successfully right so right so so basically mm -hmm. somebody calls me or they shoot me a message and they say hey i want to come throw streamers with brian Watt. Uh, i come back and i'm like you know do you question mark <laughs> <laughs> and, go, go on and then and then there's a are you sure question mark. <laughs> so, but no i'm very very upfront i, I kind of i make sure that everybody knows what they're getting into because um if you've never done it before and and you know depending on um on where you are it's you know it's not really a, a level of fishing by by any means um, but, but where your mindset is, um, sure, you know, that's, that's, that's really what, what I was, cause I'll have guys that, that, you know, say, you know, I've been fishing a little while. Um, the nymphing thing really isn't a, a, a real, it doesn't draw me in and, and everything, but I come from a bass background and I'm like, Oh, here we go. Yes. That's it. We're, we're going to basically, we're going to pull some crankbaits. You know, that's, that's kind of, right. that's kind of, that's kind of what we're, we're doing with these big things or swim baits, big swim baits. I, I've been following a lot of guys on, um, I've been saying this a lot. I, I've been following a lot of, of the big bass guys and, and, and just big fish guys on, uh, on Instagram, but they're, they're swim bait guys, the big swim bait guys, you know? So, right, right. you know, so I've been, I've been doing, uh, following a lot of that and, you know, just kind of making sure that everybody knows, you know, what they're getting into before they commit to this because because <laughs> when i commit to guiding a streamer trip say for one guy okay um if he's bringing gear i'm bringing two eight weights on top of that gear and that's the only sure. rods that'll be in the right, boat right you know that's that right. there won't be another rod in the boat because if if they're committing to do this that is the only way to do it you know you put the crutches away and put your head down and and go and, and you know, i've had and, you know more times than not honestly um it it you know it doesn't equal big fish i mean just sure 75 percent of the time you're not going to catch a big fish you're going to move something or you know in my in my neck of the woods we're really lucky that you know we've got a, a lot of big fish around us be it you know, stripers or big browns or, or something like that. You know, you're going to move something. Something's going to make you jump out of the boat and, and you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> freak out a little bit. Um, well, it, it's it's so funny that you bring up, uh, you know, bass guys. Like if, if you hear that you've got a dedicated bass guy that wants to go, you know, you're, you're, you get psyched on that and you kind of feel like, okay, he can do it. Because what I've been noticing in the last couple of years, right, and I have, I have a great example, you know, you take a guy who is in tune with nymphing or dry fly fishing, and then he wants to switch over to a big streamer game, that tends to be a little tough. Right. But lately, I've seen like a handful of guys on our Facebook page or wherever, you know, I just fished with a guy in Iowa. I mean, and his game is stick baits. It's been that way his whole life, okay? You know, right. he's throwing stick baits throw in soft plastics and a handful of these dudes all of a sudden send me these messages and they're like, check out this, this big Brown I caught on a streamer. Like, I <laughs> think I'm getting the hang of this. So it, the style of fishing, like you said, almost speaks so much more 
to a gear guy than a traditional fly guy that I almost see this big streamer craze being this weird gateway into fly fishing for a lot of these guys that, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, didn't care about fly at all because that was just, you know, old guys dropping little teeny tiny caddis on the surface. And now it's like, oh, man, like they're doing the same thing I've been doing my whole life. Now I need to try that. Exactly. And I've seen some converts, and I think it's really cool. Like, you know, guys who just just put the stick baits away and, uh, you know, the, 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 the guy I was fishing with in Iowa, you know, we fly fished. Uh, my buddy and I, he threw stick baits pretty much the whole time. But every time he'd get into a hole that he thought might have a chance, you know, he'd pick up the fly rod, chuck a streamer through it. You know, he wasn't right. as devoted to it as we were. But that spoke to him a lot more. He saw the merit in that a hell of a lot more than, you know, dry fly fishing or something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Taking someone that, that has, has been throwing gear for a long time, especially a, a, a someone that chases predators, you know, you know, they tend to know, oh, well, this is exactly what we do, just in a little different way, in a, a little bit more of a of a subtle way, I guess. Yeah, I guess you could say it. Not not really subtle in my boat very often because, God, I'm loud. But right. you know, <laughs> right, right. Well, it, it, it's, yeah. it's it's a yeah, it's a different prison. It's a different way of presenting the same kind of food source and triggering the same reaction. You know, so it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, even we were out in Iowa on this shoot, and I don't want to give away too much about it because it's my next episode. But you know, <laughs> stick bait homeboy, man, he like he had his methods. Three rips through a hole downstream, right? You throw up and cast down. You know, three rips and thinking, hey, if there's a big brown in there, he's he's only looking for two footers or better. It's going to eat it right away. And I would come in behind him or ahead of him with a streamer. And I'm like, I got to pick this apart and I got to swing one this way. And maybe he's sitting this way, you know, <laughs> so we're doing the same thing. We're trying to feed him this big ass meal, but you know, and that's why, yeah. And, and we're not, we're not here to like go off on what fly fishing means to the world. That's silly. But I, that's why I always looked at it like uh, a tool, not necessarily a way of life. Like it's, it's another trick to have in your arsenal that at some point is going to be the better thing to do. Maybe not in all situations, Absolutely. but in some, it's going to be, you know, the better presentation. Right. Right. And you know, what's, what's kind of funny in my circle, um, what, which, you know, the, the Southern Missouri, Northern Arkansas kind of circle, a, a lot of the guys that I run with, hang out with, um, what we end up talking about a lot is, uh, is, is gear stuff. Right. You know, um, right. It, what's, what's, you know, with, with colors and profiles and, and stuff like that of flies compared to gear, but, but not only that, you know, the movement most, I mean, everybody wants to, we're all trying to get that perfect spook, you know, movement out right. of a fly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's exactly what everybody's going for. If we could get that figured out, well, and then, and then it comes back to us thinking, well, you know, what's wrong with us going and throwing gear? Well, <laughs> we never, we never commit to it. You know, we never commit to it, but, but we we all we all think it, and we all know we need to do it because we would learn a lot. Well, I, put you know, put the fly rod down for a month. Yep. Go float our rivers with just gear for a month, <laughs> and you learn. You know what I mean? But we 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 can never bite the bullet and actually do it. Dude, <laughs> one of these days I will do that. I, I will know, absolutely do that. Yeah, it's funny because I grew up primarily con conventionally fishing for trout, and I have no problem doing it. And when I went out to Iowa. I was like, hey, Dave, you know, I'm going to do it your way, man. Like, don't think I'm a fly snob. I'm going to do it your way. And every hole we'd roll up to, I would get in my head that, like, well, if there's one in here and it wants to eat, i got to throw the streamer first because that's what I want him to eat. <laughs> but that's so stupid. Like, what's the difference? It's just, you're right. You can't, you can't get your head out of it, you know? I don't know how many right. pike trips I've been on where I'm like, well, for the slow parts, I'm going to bring a couple swim baits, and I bring them, and like I don't, but I don't throw them. I just keep throwing that fly. You know what I mean? And I yeah. promise people, it's not like a snob thing. It's just like, it's just how I'd rather have them. But right. you're right, man. If more, if more fly guys, you know, the best fly fishermen started out as gear fishermen. Hundred oh, percent. You meet you, yeah. You 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 meet guys who like just watched a river runs through it and jumped in later. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I've I've fished with some, and it's like, dude, that boy can put a dry fly 70 feet, like right on the nose of a sipper. Right. H hand him a rod with a with a with a Mister Twister on it, dude. 
It's going every direction <laughs> under the sun. Like you don't know where it's going. So, you know, the best fly guys started out conventionally fishing. Um, and it's awesome. Agree. It's it's awesome to hear you say that, you know, at least that you guys are thinking about it. Maybe you're not pulling the trigger because they're, you know, I get it. But, you know, that's you're right. Like there's so much more to learn in streamer fishing from conventional fishing. But right. To, no, uh, right. And, and, you know, with with the streamer chronicles episodes that that we that I've done in the last couple of years, one of the questions I ask I, I'm, is is what do you see for the future of streamer fishing? And and I don't know if it's seventy five percent of them or anything like that, but they they said you know it's it, well, it's, a, it's already leaning more toward gear, um you know and and it really is you know a few years ago there the lips came out and people were putting lips on on streamers and and stuff like that, um you know you're making a crankbait you're our, you're making a crankbait i mean there is no doubt about it you, there's no argument try don't even try to argue <laughs> i can't get my head around that idea too that you know every every year every couple months you know something else comes out and i'm just like shit all this stuff is doing is turning streamers more and more into lures and the right. funny thing about that to me is it's like the the stream the fly world i mean at least the streamer side of it seems totally cool with that but then you go to a river and like somebody drifts by in a john boat instead of a clack throwing a rapala and like he's still a dick you know oh, what right. i mean right like, aren't we trying to make like ultimately we're trying to make the same things here and i i'm curious because you you are so much more plugged in you know with the the key players in the streamer world you know, how do these tires that have been around and proven themselves and been innovators, innovators feel about this? You know, I mean, I'm seeing more and more synthetic tails that you just tie in, you know, made out of the Kevlar stuff and, right. you know, cut this and twisty tails and helmets and skins and, you know, all these different things that, that just sort of make it so much easier to create something fishy. You almost have to think about it less. I mean, do these guys right. hate it? Do you hate it? Do you embrace it? You know, what are your thoughts on it? What I run into a lot is, you know, the, the twisty tails and, and stuff like that have a have a uh, have a purpose. You know, uh, they absolutely have a purpose. And and I honestly think that um, you get them in a toothy predator kind of situation, uh, like a big toothy predator, your pike, musky stuff like that. You 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 probably move more fish. They will help you move more fish, but what what I see with the the helmets and and stuff like that, all this stuff that just keeps getting added to it takes away what the one movement we're trying to get, and and is that completely weightless, you know, have a fly turn around and kiss its own ass, you know oh, what I mean? Sure, that's sure. that's what we're looking for. We you know if we can make a fly swim in figure eight. <laughs> that's what we would do the rest of our life. I would never throw another fly. If I, okay. <laughs> if, okay. if for one strip I can make a fly swim in a figure eight, I'm done. <laughs> I will fish that fly the rest of my life, and I will laugh at you because I'm handing you <laughs> your hat. <laughs> I mean, that's just a lot of these things are, they are what they are. You know, um, and, and, uh, and everybody knows, everybody's heard it. They, every, they've, everybody's heard, you know, this, oh, this fly catches the fisherman. This thing catches the fisherman. Of course. It doesn't catch fish. Of course. You know, and, and, and it's, and that's, that's kind of the old cliche. And, and, and it kind of, it, it, it kind of gets old in so many ways, but, you know, true innovation, uh, just all it does is, is give us something that we didn't have before. Right. Right. You know, um, you know, whereas whereas whenever you're adding uh, a twister tail on, you know, I, I really I and, and nothing against that stuff. But in my eyes, the way I look at it, man, we've had slapping for how long? Right. Right. You know, sure. tell me why this this adds so much more than if I were to put a, a slapping feather on that's six inches off the back of my fly and you give you have a twisty tail that's you know, six inches off the back of your fly. Right. Tell me how this is going to be a big difference. And, um, you know, that, that's, that's where I'm coming from. It, it, true innovation, it, it, it answers a question. Right. And, okay. and um, I, that's, that's where I'm going with it. I, I agree with that 100%. However, there is just one 
sort of like thorn maybe then in, in the side of that argument that I, I have to bring up, right? Because it, 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 it speaks to everything we're saying here about innovation and, you know, to your point about how everybody's ultimate goal is to, you know, get a fly perfectly, quote, sluggoing or, uh, you know, spinning or, you know, wagging, walking like a sport, right. whatever. Um, if, if you tie flies... Uh, and at this point, you've never heard of a, a dragon tail. Mm-hmm. Something is com- completely wrong with you. Like for for the listeners, like if you tie and you don't know what a dragon tail is, like get with it. Right. Because <laughs> these things started. These things started out as toys. I found them. They were called tricky worms. <laughs> yep, I've got um, I've got half a hook. dozen in my drawer right now. They still have the eyes on them. <laughs> right. right, 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 right. I have the ones with the eyes. Uh, a, a Hookshots fan tipped me off in 2015, sent a picture of these things. So I, they were tricky worms. I've interviewed uh, Dave Mangum down in Florida, who ultimately brought them to the fly world. They were squirmel toys down in the south. But anyway, all all this is is a long, stubby piece of tapered chenille, basically. And they started off as a toy. Orvis now makes them in all the right colors, whites and purples. And, you know, they're not just fluorescent. And... I got to say, man, like I'm getting ready to go on a streamer trip next week. And because I don't have a ton of time, you know, normally when I'm gearing up, I'm not trying to fill a box, but I'll, I'll tie a half dozen, you know, new patterns to take along or eight to take along, whatever, right? I am I'm looking right now on the ledge here at 15 flies I've already completed in drips and drabs the last couple of days. And every single one of them is a different color dragon tail. <laughs> and... <laughs> Reason being, right, point blank, two things. One, here's how you tie one. Tail on, laser dub, laser dub, glue the eye, drink a beer. (laughs) Done. Like, that's it, dude. There's nothing else to do. And while on one hand it's like, man, this is so lame, I mean, dude, the way they move, I mean, it's all in the tail. That's like, I have yet to find a fish from a pike to a brown to a lot. That, that won't eat one. Right. You know, so is that a cheat to you? No, or is no that way. innovation? No, I, you know, I, I, I would hate to go as far as say that that was like innovative. You know, when I, when I think of, when I think of, of that, um, uh, I went to my local grocery store. I don't know. Man, it was probably 10 years ago, something like that. And, and I saw these things and they were closing them out. Well, no, I, I take mm-hmm. it back. I, I went to Toys R Us with my boys when they were little, little, little. And they had this mm-hmm. video going of this cool little worm. And I was like, well, yeah. So we, we got it and messed with it. And it wasn't long before I had it on a hook. And it was, it, that's, you know, that's what it was. And, you know, um, what, what I think it does is, no, it does answer a question. It does, it does bring something else to the table, but it, it makes, it just, all it does is make something easier that we have. And that's chocolate's game changer. Sure. 100%. It gives you the same, you know what I mean? It gives you the 100%. same movement, that, but you don't have to tie six or eight things together and stuff like right. that. You're done. Where, where you, and you don't have to trim anything. There's no trimming. There, you know, it's, it's easy. And they do swim awful sexy. Yep. I mean, they really do. Yeah, the durability I, sucks, a, but they swim like amazing. Right. I, I'm not a, I'm not a overly huge fan because I, I feel they're, they tend to, they tend to make it back weighted, but, but you know, for double handing for a very fast retrieve, yeah, right. absolutely yeah. great, great, great product. I, I agree completely. And they're making them real small now too. Did you know that? <laughs> the, yeah, they're making they're making several sizes. And uh, for years, when I when they first came to my attention, because they were they were toys and uh, <laughs> probably the worst toy ever, that I made the mistake. And I actually I actually wrote about this. I got clever. And I went to like a direct from China site and it was like 180 of them for 12 bucks you know, <laughs> yeah. d- 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 direct from Beijing. And I was like, boop, sold, right? <laughs> right. Dude, you thought the ones from the Dollar Tree were shitty? <laughs> These things melted. Like they touched water and melted. And I was like, 
damn, I got so many. There's so many tricky worms. And it was it was it was actually not long before I came down to fish with you. That was in 2015. Like my daughter was born less than a month after I got home from that trip with right. you, and I just sat on these things and <laughs> sat on these things. And she got a little older and a little older, and I'd be like, "Here, tricky worm!" Like, "Oh, you're crying, tricky worm!" <laughs> oh, you know, you, you, here, tricky worm. And then by the time she was one and a half, she was like, "I don't want your tricky. I, I don't even want these. I'm sick to like, these are so lame. Dead. I don't even want them." <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they were always these horrid fluorescence so i'd make pike flies out of them you know they'll eat anything i'd make stuff to take offshore like for for dolphin you know they'll eat anything but i didn't really start leaning on them too hard for trout until more recently when the orvis colors came out now they have the right colors and i don't know dude maybe maybe it's lame maybe i've gotten lazy i don't know but it's just like wham wham done and damn do they get eight you you kind of have three ways of thinking when it comes to like fly design. You know you have you have total fishability, right? You know, then then you have fishability with some sex appeal, and then you have complete just you know hot blonde. <laughs> that's it. You know what I mean? That and and then you know that that I'm more of that that middle ground. Um, I like, I like the design part sure. of, of a fly. You know, I, I like to, um, I like to have a fly that, that I can make swim right and keel right. I'm kind of a, Oh, I'm kind of the, the keel Nazi. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, I, if, 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 if somebody comes and, the, and they're like, Hey, I want to, I'd, I'd like to throw this fly. I've been, I've been I've been messing with it for a little while. I'm like, yeah, sure, that's that's great. You know, let's let's mess with it. It's in the water for ten seconds and it's falling over on its side. I'm like, dude, we're getting that off there. Let's get a real fly in there. <laughs> well, you know, dude, it's it's interesting you say that because, like, you know, maybe I'm I'm I apologize if I'm saying too much, but like, interesting thing, you know, dude, you are you are known as the sort of gatekeeper, in my opinion, of the streamer culture. It's like if it's worth throwing. Brian's tying it, you know, like that's, you know, you know this, dude, you know, like you are an outlet for people to get their head around the latest and greatest and, and, and coolest ties. And, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is amazing and, you know, it looks great. And I remember when I came down to fish with you, I was like, oh, I can't wait to see Brian's streamer box. Like this is going to be the bomb. (laughs) And you opened it. And while it was chock full, I mean, chock full of patterns, Dude, there was not a whole ton of variety in there, right? I mean, you had all like yeah. different colors and some different sizes, right. but pattern wise, man, there was not a whole lot going on there. And right away, I knew I was like, okay, these are the ones that you lean on. And as I as I recall it, the bulk of that box, man, was straight up double deceivers. Done, hands down, you hands know. down. Yeah, yeah. I I look for, but you know, I have that ability to. Um, every, the water we fish around here is for the most, you know, for the majority of the time anyway, um, is, is, is bigger water, right. uh, it, long casts, you know, we're not going to drop in the bucket right, right, that, that often, right. you know, that often I don't need, I don't need a helmet, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't <laughs> think of the last time I actually threw a helmet, a helmeted fly. I, I just. I, I don't I don't carry them. Right. I, now I will I will have a skull right. on a double deceiver, right. um, you know, and stuff like that. But you know, uh, those those super, <laughs> I I kind of say this it, tongue in cheek, but you know, um, a, around here, especially like the White River and and stuff like that, the White River on regular water, um, if it's jigging, if it's a head heavy fly, if it's jigging. Uh, you know, you you're just gonna try to beat rainbows off of it all right. day long, right? You know, rainbows love jigging stuff, and that, that's that's great. You know, um, you know, and and browns browns like a fall, you know, at the right spot, a fall off a ledge or something like that. But the whole jigging up and down, up and down, up and down thing, just it's just a rainbow. I don't know. No, I, no, no, it, no. It, I just I will. No, dude. I, I will never be drawn to that, you, you, especially around here. You, you, you know, it, you told me this when we were down there, and I got to tell you, man. And 
I, I've, I think I've rewritten it at least once since and credited you for it because, I mean, we only spent a couple days together down there, and I learned, don't blush, but, like, I learned so much that I took with me elsewhere because I had only really been playing big streamers, you know, locally for a couple of seasons, like, really getting into the big stuff. And for anybody who's never fished the White River, like Brian says, it, it's a huge piece of water, and... It, in my opinion, you know, maybe you'll say different, but it, it doesn't quite fish the same as your average trout river. You know, you're not beating banks, you know, like the fish can kind of come from anywhere. You know, I mean, there's so many dips right. and, dips in, and, and crevices in the bottom that, you know, where I fish on the upper Delaware, you're, you're beating banks. And if there's a big brown there, he's up on that bank because he's looking to eat. He doesn't live there where... I feel like on the white, you know, there's a little bit more of that making them move kind of deal. And I had used weighted head streamers locally. And you were the one that said, for for that very reason, I hardly ever use a weighted fly here because it attracts smaller fish. And, you know, I, you said, I want that fly when you hit it to change direction, go this way and then go that way. Right. Like natural prey that might actually piss off, you know, the biggest brown down there. And ever since then, man, unless it's a real small stream or there's some reason why I feel like I need a weighted head for this spot, I rarely put on a weighted fly. It has been straight up unweighted, right. and you just let your sink tip, you know, do do your, do its thing and take that fly down. And you also said, you know, now it makes a, a belly, and you're fishing from the end of the cast all the way back to the boat. And exactly. Yeah. And the the number of fish after getting my head around that, that I, that I caught in other places, two feet from the boat where I would have been completely, you know, out of that zone with a shorter sink tip or whatever, an intermediate skyrocketed, mm -hmm. you know? And oh, right. I think it's a kind of a tough thing for, for rookies. Cause I'm, I'm sure you get a ton of questions about gearing up to do this. Right. Right, you know, and <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's a daily thing. Yeah, daily. And so many people, because they've asked me too, it's like, uh, you know, what 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 weight rod do I need? I need. It's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, man, that's like so just one part of this. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and like the smallest part it could be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, know. you know, it's like you know. Well, you should have a sink tip line, but you want this length if you're on a drift boat, in my opinion. If you're wade fishing, that's going to be a lot to handle. So do, well, can I just do a floater? Well, you could, but then get some sink <laughs> tips you can loop on the end for this. It's like, you know, there's there's a lot more to it. But, right. I mean, that set up, you know, w unweighted fly and just the sink tip to, to get that fly down was awesome and and i i've taken that everywhere ever since and i remember you also you um you read your leaders kind of funky loop to loop if i remember for a very specific reason yeah i i, I tend to do um i don't i i a lot of guys that are using these the sink tips uh i'm sorry when i say sink tip i it, we we anymore we talk integrated sink tips you know not right, that, the, yeah yeah not the not loop to loop on. Yeah. right um right so, you know, because cause whenever you, you really think of the actual sink tip and the true term of sink tip, that's really what it is. You know, sure. those those loop-to-loop -loop horrible hinging uh -huh. pieces of crap. <laughs> 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 you know, that's, that's what we think of. But, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy that I still like a little bit better turnover even if it's four feet if my if my leader is going to be four feet long which my leaders will it will end up being around five ish you know I, i'm not going to measure it right i'm just gonna I, I, I bet i bet i get to the point where i i get them within six inches of each other just by pulling off you know the same amount of line every single time but you know I, i'm around five feet and and i and i but i still like a little bit more of a turnover um than than going with a straight piece of mono say say sure. 18 to 20 pounds i'm sorry not mono fluoro um because right. because you know that one time it, the, everything we do goes back to that one cast you know that all we're all we're trying to finally make is the one cast where everything goes right you know that i mean that that's all we're shooting for you know we're sure. it's, it's we're basically musky fishing all the time 
So, yeah. you know, that's, that's exactly what it is. So, so I want that if, if I have a, just a little bit extra turnover, um, I'll put to help me get that little extra turnover to straighten everything out. And I'll tell you why after I kind of explain it, but like I'll have, uh, say, say three feet ish of say like 30 pound, uh, flora. Just okay. straight 30 pound flora with a, with a loop on the end of it. Off of that, I'm going to have, you know, 2015, 18, and 2018, 15, somewhere in there. Um, very rarely do I go under 15 pound test. I've never had a reason right. to. I don't have, I, you could right. tie coaxial cable and they'll still eat it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, yeah, we're not, we're not, those are the ones about. we like anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> So what, so I'll loop to loop those together. Um, and, and, and my main thing is you, when, when you're throwing this stuff and, and you have a gust of wind or something like that and you don't lay your line all the way out flat. Okay. Say you pile the last, the last two feet. Okay. Um, okay. I, I I've seen fish eat so quick right after the fly land yeah. that yeah. It, you, you sit there and wonder how the hell can they get it in their mouth that quick? And if you've got, and they're pulling two and a half feet of slack out, that does not equal good things most of the time. Yep. You know, yep. so if, if, if I'm going to, all we're doing is trying to give ourselves the best shot at catching the biggest fish we will ever see in our life. And well, did you, you, you said it best in the video we shot. You were like, and, and this is a hundred percent true. hundred percent. I don't, I don't, I don't care what your streamer fishing for. The bastard never eats on 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 the perfect cast <laughs> ever. It's never the cast that you're like, oh man, I I you know like everybody's like, oh, I'm owed one for that. I'm like, well, you said that. It's instant guarantee. It's not going to happen now. Yeah, yeah hold your yeah, breath and see how it one... goes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're right. It's the one where it doesn't turn over, and your shit's wrapped around your ankles, right? And before you ever even strip. Some bitch just comes up and eats it, and there's right. nothing you can do. It right. happened to me just a couple of weeks ago. Yep. You know? So, dude, one thing I don't think I've ever asked you, you know, when this whole big streamer thing was first getting started, what was, you have to remember, the first pattern, whether you used it right away or not, that just got slapped in your hand and you were like, damn. Like, it was what the was dungeon. the one? The sex it was the dungeon. Sex that's, dungeon. That's, yeah. Hands down. Mm -hmm. It was, um, I, I was <laughs> I was sitting at uh, Schlafly's in St. Louis, Missouri, which is a, a local brewery uh, and and restaurant. I was sitting there with with several guys. Uh, Feathercraft Fly Shop, the big fly shop, uh, big mail right, order place, right. is is out of St. Louis, and um, and one of the guys that worked at the shop had just started, and and I'm really close to him now. His name's Evan Muscop. Um, he he walks in and throws it on the table and it lands right in front of me and it was and I can see this plain as day in my head right now. It was the uh, it was the the like the natural gray and rust and and brown color. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and it hits the table. It's still in the plastic package. You know, it, they they hadn't even taken it out of the package, and it was right. the first shipment that they had got. So, you know, there's there's a few shops that get these early things. And this was, so this was very early and I look at it and I was just like, what is that? Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but then, you know, you look at it a little bit longer and it's like, this is cool. So I actually, yeah. I lost that fly because I was, I was fishing. I was, I waded in on the North Fork of the White River where, where you could, actually within a hundred yards of where you caught that 22. Okay. 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 Uh, on, on when we shot the hook shots, um, it was within a hundred yards of that spot, and and I was nymphing, and the fish, and they were just not cooperating. So I put that fly on, on a five weight on five X, <laughs> 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 and I proceeded to get hammered and lost it on the on the strike. So yeah, that was. No, it didn't last long. Yeah. It was on for ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I've, and for anybody who just doesn't know the brief history, the sex dungeon—that's one of Kelly Gallup's patterns. And I would, I would argue, and I'm sure you would agree that 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 dude is ultimately the the godfather of modern streamer fishing. I mean, he sort of would you not say lit lit the spark that that sort of developed this whole deal with some of his early patterns long you, before most people were doing it. 
Right. You know, I, I think, and, and I think Kelly would, uh, Kelly's a good buddy of mine. I, I, and I'm, I'm really lucky to be able to say that. Um, and, and I think he would agree with me when I said this. I, I'm, I'm very sure he'd agree. Um, I, I think his, I mean, his flies and his creations are great. They're one of a kind. I mean, he's, you can tell a gallop pattern from a mile away. Um, right. but he is awesome with names. So, oh yeah, you know well, I've I mean? interviewed. So I that, wouldn't call him. I can't call him a buddy, but I've interviewed him a few times, and I'd be like, "How'd you name that?" And he would tell me the whole story, and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> f- dude, I can't print three quarters of what you just said, man." Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, so you know, he he definitely is the one that that got got this commercial, um, right, and, right, and, right. and and started that. And 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 in all seriousness, that's the one. That's the one thing that's going to make it make something blow up, as if. If something lands commercially and bites, and and if you're throwing fly patterns out there that are named the Sex Dungeon and the sack, Stacked Blonde and you know sure. just you know stuff like that, it's going to get attention in the bin really quick. So uh, right. even though they were, even though most bins were putting the S Dungeon in there, <laughs> yeah, they do. It's always the S Dungeon. Right. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So. I mean, you know, you look at how innovative his his stuff was going back, and I mean, how much innovation there's been in in in, in the streamer game since. And you know, we talked a little bit about sort of a dual perspective here. On one hand, we we already talked about how you know pre cut fish shaped tails and all, you know all this stuff that's just like stick it on and go is taking over. And then you know you also have to sort of play into that theory of you know. Uh, if it, if it, if it wiggles, is that enough? Like, is there a need to get super detailed? And what I'm driving at between those two is like, in your opinion, you know, is it harder than ever to be innovative, you know, with streamer tying these days? Like, are we getting to that point where it's like, oof, you know, there's, there's not a lot that hasn't been done. Oh, that's, that's, that, that actually may be one of the better questions I've ever had. Oh, um, yay. But, yes, me. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, there, that's a that's a two sided coin. Everything's a two sided coin. So, you know, yeah, it, almost everything's been done. The, it, no matter no matter how you look at it, it, it something has kind of been done like this. Of course, you, know, that's, you, you that's can't flies. Yeah, you can't, right, exactly. So, you know, basically, you know, uh, even even Kelly says it. You know, a lot of his flies, the root hook is a glorified woolly bugger. Right. Sure. Yeah, you know, 100%. I mean, yeah. But it's a bully bugger with a with a marabou wing over it just to give more bulk yep. and, and to help keel and stuff like that. But it's it's got a reason. You know, it's got a whole point. Right. But, you know, with – like having said everything, almost everything's been done. There's all sorts of – we are – we're in a, in a spot right now, especially on the streamer side of things, where the the company, the hairline, is, is putting out – or is distributing? I don't want to say they're putting out because it's not only them. They, you know, we have new materials that are that are coming out constantly. I mean, this stuff is this stuff is so fluid right now, and it has been for years. It, it's you kind of wonder how long the bubble, how big the bubble can get before it does pop. Because sure. every single season, there is there is really really cool materials coming out that helps tweak stuff that we've seen in the past right right you know so you know so to to basically dance around your question even more (laughs) (laughs) um you know it's it it is it's i it's not impossible to be i'll never say it's impossible to be totally um non-innovative totally innovative yeah uninnovative (laughs) however that whatever that word i don't know either um (laughs) So, because you know, the last time I really thought we were there, uh, Blind Chocolate dropped the game. Change. Sure, and sure, you know what I mean. And and literally, uh, you know, uh, and and bless his heart, you know, I, I think a lot of Blaine. Blaine's helped me a lot, and and we've I've I've done a lot of talking with Blaine. I'm not a huge fan of the game changer, but I will be the first to stand in line and say it is aptly named. Right. Totally. Because. Because it, it got in, it came in whenever we were in a little bit of a bubble. We were, we were kind of in a spot where it was, it, it was starting to get a little bit stale, and we had settled in on patterns. And then, boom, this video comes out, and 
everybody's kind of like, how the hell do you tie that right. thing? And then, and then I would still like know, to know. Came out with the I, stuff. I would, yeah. I would still like to know because I stopped after the third one that I'm like, man, that looks really great. And then I go swim it, and I'm like, and that swims like shit. Damn it, that was four hours. I'll never get back. You know. So I just buy, right. I just buy and, game and changers. I, You're welcome, Blaine. You know. <laughs> just, yeah. I just buy, just buy game yeah. changers and call it good. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I probably would too. I, I that's a, it's a fly. You know, I've, I've messed with them in different ways. I've messed with the shanks in different ways. I can't, I, 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 I can't trim them good enough nope. to me either to do. I don't know why. I, I think, I think, you know, deer hair guys tend to do pretty well with them. So, right. you know, that, right. Right. I think it, exactly. it lends itself, itself to a sculpting kind of thing, but so, you know, so I, you know, I think it's, I think they're, you can be innovative. Um, but I think it's because the, the materials are, constantly being tweaked and and it's just and and we've got a we've got a a pretty hard push from you know the the overseas guys right you know those the europeans sure. are are doing stuff that that we we have we we don't have a clue i i think I think in so many ways, which this, which this, I don't know if we're jumping into anything else. This could lead into something totally different, but you know, I, I think we are, we are falling way behind um, as far as, as, you know, as we go in the U S in streamer design, but those guys over there are doing stuff that's just leaps and bounds prettier and swimmier than what we're doing. Really? I, I, I yeah, their, their color combos are uh, on a, there, it's such a different level that it's not. We're not even on the same planet, and it's just yeah. Where where are these flies being tied? Like what countries are we talking? A, a lot of the guys that I'm following are Swedish. You mm-hmm, know, like mm-hmm. like Andreas Anderson and sure, Ulf sure. and uh, just you know several. Uh, there's there's several of them. Um, and I'm I'm actually talking with um, Nacho. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say his name wrong. Heredero. He's a Spaniard. Sounds um, right to me. So. <laughs> right he's he uh I'm, I'm actually i actually just started uh his series of flies with i've got i did one video and i tied his laloma uh which i believe is roughly translated into the hill okay. <laughs> <laughs> but i need to ask him about that the nicest guy i have ever conversed with i swear i need to ask him about that but no um you know it just they are it's it's a totally different ball game especially the swedes you know the the swedes are um, and, and to me, it's probably more along the lines of color combos. Right. You know, m- mixing colors. Andreas has, if you were to, if you were to, say, if you were to say, you know, I'm going to mix root beer with purple, hot pink, and yellow. Uh huh. I would laugh at you. Right. Because come on, really. But then it's like magically, Andreas has a has a you know. <laughs> An, old, an unholy diver that is those colors, and you're like, how in the world can you do that? That's not even right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and right, he right. does. It's just, it's, I, I follow those guys big time. Sure. Now, Andreas, of course, is one of the many guys that you've focused on in your web series, um, Streamer Chronicles. And if anybody listening to this doesn't know what that is, and you call yourself a streamer junkie, get with it because <laughs> it is like the ultimate look inside the mind of some of the most notable, you know, revolutionary streamer guys out there. So I got to ask, man, like who can we expect to see on Streamer Chronicles this season? Uh, yeah, we're going to – this may – I hate to just throw it out there, but I, if I'm going to, I'm going to do it on your podcast. But um, this this upcoming season – Maybe the last one. There's an actual season. No, I, I'm going to do some. Yeah, I, I'm going because it's it's going to get really hard from here on out. Um, but I'm going to replace them with something. Sure. So yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> but you know, um, I I've had so many people say, you know, uh, it's about time you did one on you, and I was like, on who me? You know, I don't even know on on me. Oh, not on you. Joe. Why would I do? <laughs> I was going to say, man. I was like, the moment I've been waiting for. Brian wants to come up and throw fucking so dragon tails on my that, home man. water for a week. Damn it! 
No, I, Joe, I will absolutely. Shot you, you shot a, you shot a hook shot with me. Well, let's, let's come and do a stream of Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got the green light for a stream of Chronicles anytime you want, well, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And likewise, man, like if you're going to go out with a bang on stream of Chronicles and do one on yourself, let me know. I'll come down and shoot it. Oh wow! I ah. that's that may be that may be something that we need to talk about. When you are ready, I will do it for a dozen flies tied by Brian Wise and exactly <laughs> four gas station corn dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget the corn dog. <laughs> yes! Oh my god! So, you know, these podcasts kind of get recorded sort of in drips and drabs. You know, you do the interview one night, and then I record my introduction maybe a couple days later. So Joe's closing thoughts here for this one are actually being recorded after the streamer trip that I told Brian I was gearing up for when we were talking for this podcast. And I mention that because something happened on that trip, and I have to tell this quick story because it just speaks so perfectly to the sort of divide between the new school streamer junkies that we're talking about here and the old school guys. So I was up on the Upper Delaware River system, and this is in the Catskills of New York, and I consider that home waters. And for anybody who doesn't know, I mean, the Delaware is world-renowned as just a bug factory. Some of the most prolific and just incredible hatches on any river on, on the East Coast. So I was going up to float with my buddy Bob, and we get up in the morning, and it is just pouring rain. You know, it was forecast to be pouring rain pretty much all day. It, it, the temperature had dropped 20 degrees from the day before, and we're just watching the, the west branch of the Delaware just get muddier and muddier by the minute. So instead of floating that, we we pull his boat to the upper east branch of the river because we thought it'd be cleaner. And it was. It was much cleaner, but it was still, you know, starting to, to kind of milk out and just get that milky look, you know, a little bit stained. And, you know, to a streamer guy, you're like, that's money. Money. And my buddy Bob loves throwing streamers as much as I do. So we're we're pumped, man. You know what I mean? It's like, whatever, throw a rain jacket on and let's get after it. So we drop the boat in at the ramp, and, and Bob goes to move the truck, and, and sitting anchored next to us there is another drift boat, and the, the two guys on it, like, they're not smiling, they're not talking, they're just, you know, buried under their hoods, buried under their rain gear, they're trying to light these thick cigars in the pouring rain, and, and you just, you feel bad, because you know, like, these guys were looking for that bug day this was not the day they had in mind when they booked this trip you know and they are just miserable so i'm i'm sitting there waiting for bob and and their guide comes down and she says to these guys she's like well guys you know i'm not sure what we're gonna see and I, you know i'm thinking maybe what we should do and the one dude cuts her right off and goes absolutely no streamers and like almost verbatim, he said, oh, you know, we were up here last year with so-and-so, and he made us throw that stupid shit all day, and you know what we caught? Absolutely nothing. And she's like, okay, that's fine. You know, we'll we'll look for heads. And to be completely honest, the, the Upper East Branch is, is so buggy that, you know, you, you normally see some fish rising right at the ramp, especially on an overcast day, and there was nothing in eye shot up or down, no sign of rising fish. So Bob comes down, and they're still rigging up, and we shove off just ahead of them. And as we're shoving off, the dude looks at my fly, and he goes, look at that big, ugly thing. What is that, a sex dungeon? So I'm just like, ha, 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 yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah, sex dungeon. Have a fun day, guys, blah, blah. We shove off, okay, and they shove off right behind us. And it's, other than the pitter-patter of the rain, it is dead quiet out there. So we, we start this float, and they're, they're maybe 100 feet behind us, you know, sort of rigging up, and, and we're going down, and I start throwing this black dragon tail I had tied up, and I made three casts, and this fish that was easily 20, maybe a couple inches over, comes flying off the bank behind it, swipes at it, and misses, and the fish never connected. But here it is, dead silent. These guys are miserable as hell, and I'm just like, F Bob, did you see that? Holy shit! Holy shit! Now, of course, the ultimate kick in the nuts would have been if I had actually stuck that fish, but I didn't, 
But still, every time for the rest of that float that we leapfrogged that boat, those guys had nothing to say, didn't even look at us, and I just got like a little tickled about the whole thing. And you know what? I understand, you know, when when you want dry fly game, it's like me with streamers. That's how I prefer to catch them. You want them on dries. That's super cool. And I love dry fly fishing. I actually caught one of the biggest trout on the same trip the next day um, that I have on a dry, biggest brown in, in years on a dry. And it was it was a ton of fun. We had fish up all over the place, and it, it is so much fun. But I think the key difference, the thing that, that grabs me differently about streamers is, you know, when you see a fish rising, it's like, there he is. You know what I mean? All I have to do is make the right presentation, have the right fly. But there he is. I know what I'm getting into. You can usually gauge kind of what size that fish is, and, and there's no mystery in it. He's, he's right up on top, chowing away. Versus streamer fishing, the, the, the fun is almost the not knowing. It's the surprise element of making all these casts and, and having no idea after hours, maybe, you've been throwing when that blast is going to come and how big it's going to be, how big that flash is going to be when it finally happens. And... To me, that is, is, is really what's addicting about it. It's, it's the not knowing. Now, if you too enjoy the shock and awe of that moment when that brown finally moves on a big streamer, there's one that you might get him to move on faster. You know, Brian has built up Fly Fishing the Ozarks on tying other people's streamers for years. And he told me, you know, I get emails and messages all the time with, with people wanting to buy patterns and they don't realize that they're not my patterns. And I have to, to send them to the commercial tires who came up with this stuff and who actually sell them. Well, finally, after all these years, Brian Wise is selling an original on his website, flyfishingtheozarks.com. It is called the Knucklehead, okay? It is made out of this new stuff called fettuccine foam that is are these tiny foam strips that sort of spin like deer hair, and as he says, he is all about making sure a fly keels, meaning it, it keeps its position in the water, it doesn't roll over, you know, it, it, it stays oriented the way that it's supposed to, no matter what kind of water you're in, and he says, this one does it. I have not gotten my hands on my own knucklehead yet, but it is a wicked-looking fly, and if you want to finally put something in your box, tied by the man himself, hit him up and order a couple. Or a couple dozen, okay? Those corn dogs are not cheap. And for the legions of devout meat chuckers, I hope that listening to Brian gave you some maybe new ideas to sort of incorporate into your game. Maybe change the way that you think about streamer fishing a little bit or your approach to it. You know, and for anybody that's sort of just thinking about getting into this, I think one important thing to to remember, you know, Brian conveyed very well that this is a... Uh, a lot of pain, but big reward sort of game. But you have to remember that he's fishing on the White River, and them boys down there, they measure their brown trout in pounds, not inches. I mean, they have fish so big, it's it's just remarkable. But the truth is, don't feel like you need to have the White River to make this work, okay? Throw this stuff on the local streams and rivers that you've been trout fishing for a long time. There might not be a 20-pound brown trout living in there, but you'll end up being real surprised by how many more quality fish you'll average in a season on any river. I don't care how big the fish are in there. So please go watch any and all things Brian produces, and based on them, Figure out which sexy meat wads that you need in your streamer box. I will catch you right back here in two weeks. And as always, thanks so much for listening to the Hook Shots podcast. <laughs>